Hello, Sarah here from smallbusinesssarah.com and today I'm going to talk about how to do your bookkeeping for Amazon if you have some Amazon Canada or Amazon Mexico sales. So there's a lot of background to this video. I'll link to the card and in the description my other main video that talks about how to do your Amazon bookkeeping in QuickBooks with a method that doesn't require an app or an integration as fast, easy, efficient, accurate, all of that. So you'll need to have that background information first. This video is simply covering the topic of what to do when you have some sales with Amazon Canada or Amazon Mexico. So this is the chart of accounts and what you'll want to do first is create another group of accounts for Amazon Canada and Amazon Mexico. If you don't want to create these accounts manually, then take a look at the card and the description to another video about the Amazon chart of accounts. And if you get that free download, the CSV file, it'll have the Amazon Canada and Mexico on there. And then you can just upload those accounts that you need into your QuickBooks account. So check that out if you want to make this a little faster. If not, you can just manually add these in. So you can see we've got, I actually say Canada usually instead of Canadian, doesn't matter. Amazon Canada income, and then we have the different types as sub accounts. We've got some Mexico here, and sometimes I have a few of the sub accounts like refunds and things like that that we need. And then when it comes to expenses, then we do the same thing. We've got Amazon Canada expenses and then our same typical categories, advertising, selling, things of that nature. So you'll want to have these accounts in your QuickBooks file. Next, let's pull up an example. So this is the Amazon summary report that we use. You'll recognize this from the other video that I mentioned. When you are selling on Amazon Canada or Mexico, your summary reports are going to be in that denomination. So this is in Canadian dollars. So this amount that was transferred to your bank, this is the Canadian dollars amount. It is not the US dollars amount. So here's what I do to make it easy. It might not be to the penny accurate. Some of you out there may have a different idea, but I have found this to be just simple and I get pretty close and for me that's good enough. If you don't like this you can find a different way. Basically what we need to do is we need to convert all of these to US dollars. So if you just do a quick search you can find the exchange rate. It normally stays pretty similar. It doesn't swing too hugely, but you can find websites that tell you historical values as well. But in our case, I'm just going to go with this. The ratio is one Canadian dollar equals 0.73 US dollars. Like I said, you can look up, you could do a Google search. Since our report is from March, we could say what was the exchange rate in March. So back to our example. So we basically just want to convert all of these to US dollars. So our sales amount, 3109.50 times 0.73 in US dollars, that's going to be 2,269. And then on down the line, we just convert them to US dollars. Like I said, that's going to get us close. I do normally have a separate Amazon holding account for Canada and for Mexico. I just find that a little bit easier as well. But then you do the rest of your journal entry and the categorizing the same way. So the deposit into QuickBooks, if it's 17, 15, 16 in Canadian dollars, it's going to be approximately 1,252.38 in US dollars. So you find that deposit amount in your bank feed. You categorize that to Amazon Holding Canada. Then you come here, you do your journal entry just like you do for the US journal entry. And you convert each number down the line to US dollars and do your journal entry like usual. Because everything in our QuickBooks account we're doing as US dollars, the deposit from Amazon was not this amount in US dollars, it was the 1252 approximately. 
So that's how I handle it. Let's take a look at Mexico. So Mexican peso, quite a different exchange rate. One peso, 0 0.055 US dollars. So if we take a look at our example, if we're doing the sales, 308361 times 0 0.055. So we're only going to be recording $169.60 in U.S. Mexico sales. That's it. But once again, same thing. Just do your journal entry the same way. The amount that you received in, in your bank account is going to be closer to only 74 bucks, not this. Especially with Mexico, we're not usually talking big bucks. So if the exchange rate, of course it varies from day to day, but really over the course of time, we're getting pretty close. We're getting pretty close. And then of course, I put all of these to their separate Amazon Mexico income accounts, separate Amazon Mexico expense accounts, etc. And that's how we handle that. Like I said, this video is not going to make any sense if you haven't watched the main video about how to do your Amazon bookkeeping and QuickBooks Online with this monthly journal entry summary method. So I encourage you to watch that first and understand the basic US dollars approach and then come here for information on how to handle Canada and Mexico in your bookkeeping. I hope this has been helpful to you. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. As always, I really appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your super thanks. All of this takes time to share this information with you, but I truly hope that it is helpful to you as you try to run your own small business. Thank you.